Good morning or good afternoon and welcome to Art for this week. This week we are going to be making digital artwork inspired by our Boosterthon Sports City Now. So let's get started. For the past week in your team huddles, you've been learning about different characteristics through athlete stories. These characteristics are teamwork, care, courage, grit, and celebration. Our goal is that we're going to be making artwork to share with Calgary Caitlin. So for this project, we're first going to show you some famous artists for your inspiration, show you a rubric, what you're going to need to do. I'm going to show you a demo in JS Paint, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to upload it special this week to Padlet so that Calgary Caitlin can see your beautiful artwork. For our famous artists, I chose two artists that are of Hispanic or Latino origin in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. Our first artist is Fabiana Rodriguez, and she is of Peruvian origin. Peru is on the western coast of South America. In her artwork, we can see many words about her themes that she concentrates on. You can also see images of cities and people and other things that represent for her what she is talking about in her social commentary. Her colors are bright, the words are direct, and notice how she uses placement and size to draw your attention. Our second artist I wanna show you is Antuco Chiaza, and he is Ecuadorian. Ecuador is also on the west side of South America, right above Peru. His artwork is more graffiti-like but still has words, images that either represent a narrative or a struggle that he's trying to convey. Look how there's usually something that draws your attention, either a hand or a word or a large object that kind of stands out from the rest. Next, I'm gonna show you the rubric, which is the requirements for this project. Our goal is to make an image on the computer to represent one of our themes for our Boosterthon. So, what you need to do is you need to show a word from our Boosterthon themes, teamwork, care, courage, grit, or celebration. You're gonna have a background or a frame, and then you're gonna do design inspired by the word. So here's my example. So number one, I have a theme word. For this one, I chose celebration. Two, I have a background or a frame. I made a city and I made a frame around it. You can do one or the other and three designs that represent, for me, what celebration feels like. It could either be real images or just shapes and colors. I'm gonna show you how to do something similar to this one. If you would like to do another design, that is totally okay. You just need to make sure you have some sort of background, some sort of designs, and one of our words. You also don't have to do this on the computer if you feel more comfortable drawing it. So now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna create my city in JS Paint. To the left over here is your toolbox. That's like your pencil kit. The bottom are color selections. And at the top, we have a few options. I'll show you how to file save at the end. But one that you're really gonna to wanna to know is that as you're working today, if you mess up, you wanna to go to edit, undo, immediately when you have messed up. So that's the way that you go back and undo immediately what you've done. So if you something doesn't go quite right, don't click a million times, stop what you're doing, and go to edit, undo. The first thing I wanna make are a bunch of buildings. So I need our, my rectangle tool. I'm going to choose the top one, which is just outline only, and I'm going to click and drag to create rectangles next to each other to represent a city. If you want them to be a color before you start drawing them, you can click either the middle or bottom rectangle and you can see how they're either outlines or completely filled in. But for this one, I wanted to have some creative fun and overlap my rectangles by clicking and dragging them so that way I can do something fun with the color. As I create my outlines, remember that yours does not have to look like mine at all. But if you did find it interesting how I did the cities, go ahead and try this. I'm also gonna do some other smaller rectangles on top because sometimes buildings have little stacks on top of them or different levels. Once I've created my city, I'm gonna think about the colors. 
You can make your city whatever colors you'd like, but you're going to click the paint bucket on the left top, and you're also going to choose colors on the bottom. So click the paint bucket, and I'm gonna choose colors from the bottom by clicking on them. And you can see that my square on the left there will change the color. Paint bucket is so that you can fill a closed area. So since these all have our lines on all sides, or they're a shape that have lines on all sides, I can click inside of them and they will turn all that color. If I click outside of these boxes, the whole background would change and be that one color. All right, the next thing I wanna do is make a frame. So I'm gonna use the free polygon tool. That's right next to the rectangle. This tool allows you to make straight lines and connect them to create a shape. So I'm gonna choose the top one again, just to make the line. And I'm going to choose black to make an outline. I'm going to click and then click somewhere else. And you can see wherever I click, a straight line is drawn to that next space. So I'm gonna do a zigzag line because zigzag lines are made of straight lines. You could do straight lines all the way across that connect to each other. You could do Greek key, but make a frame around your city by using this free polygon tool. Click, it will connect, click, it will connect, click, it will connect. And I want you to go all the way around and then you need to close the shape. That means your last click needs to be where you started from. Now that my shape is closed, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to color and by paint bucketing the entire outside frame. So I'm gonna pick a color and click outside. And you can see that that shape that I made, that zigzaggy shape that is closed can be one color and then the outside can be another color. If for some reason you click the paint bucket and it goes into all the spaces, look at your line and make sure that there isn't any gaps in it. If there are gaps, you might wanna use a pencil or a paintbrush tool to close the gap. Now I'm gonna add text by clicking the A. I am also gonna click the bottom selection that pops up for the A because that's gonna show a see-through background. And I'm gonna click and drag a really big box over my city. This is going to be my text box. Once I release, this little fonts window pops up and you can make your text really big. You can change the font and you can type one of our words. For this one, I'm gonna choose Courage. I'm going to click and select different fonts until I find a style that I feel like represents courage to me. I also, once I figure out my style, can play with how big my font's going to be. But make sure you don't click outside of this until you are done. Once again, remember, you can always go to Edit Undo if you make a mistake or want to go back and change something. So as you watch me decide on the different colors by clicking the bottom colors at the bottom or the different fonts, I want you to think about what kind of images you could put around your word. They could be real images, as in things that are from real life, um, or it could be just shapes and colors for you that represent your theme. I also, if you are doing another kind of design, think about what you need to do in terms of order. You always probably wanna start with your background and then put the word on top of it. So now I'm gonna start decorating. I chose the spray can, which is a tool that kind of will show um, like a spray paint kind of texture. I'm gonna pick a color that kind of represents courage to me and I'm going to do designs and kind of texture around my word. So for me, I'm going to use red and I'm just going to circle kind of around the general word courage to make it stand out more and give it some emphasis. 
If you don't like something, remember you can edit undo. If you accidentally undo something that you like, you can go to edit repeat. So now I'm gonna add some images that represent courage to me. I think courage takes a lot of heart. So with the paintbrush tool, I'm going to draw some hearts. I'm also gonna fill them in with my bucket tool because it's a closed shape. I might have to go over those lines again. Make sure that whatever you're doing, that you have the correct tool selected on the left side before you start drawing or painting or coloring in. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw some shapes that I'm gonna turn into different sports equipment. For me, I'm going to draw sports that I have experience that I had to have a lot of courage in. So I'm going to use the circle tool and I'm going to make some circles. I'm going to paint bucket color them in or if I need to I can draw something on them for sports that in my experience I had to have a lot of courage for. So here's a baseball because I feel like when I played um, baseball when I was younger I had to have a lot of courage to go from plate to plate. I'm also going to draw a basketball over here because I felt like I had to have a lot of courage getting the ball and going through the defenders. So remember that your design needs to be based on your own experiences or something that inspired you in the videos during our Booster Thon Team Huddles this week. When you are done with your artwork, you need to go to File and Save. It will save onto your device as a JPEG or a PNG. Either way, it's a photo. So before you turn in your artwork, we need to make sure it has the three things. So look at your digital masterpiece, or if you did this on paper, and ask yourself, does it have a theme word from our list? Does it have a background or a frame? And does it have some sort of image or designs around it to help make it look more interesting? If it has all three things, let me show you how you're going to upload it this week. On the bottom of this lesson, there is a Padlet that is embedded into the page. When you upload to the Padlet, you need to make sure your name and your teacher's name is on it. So once you have done the project, make sure you've chosen a theme and gone through the rubric. Underneath of the instructions in the JS Paint, you'll see number three, submit art below using the Padlet. At the bottom, you're gonna hit the plus sign. In a window that looks kind of like this, or in, it might be floating inside of the colored area, will show up. For title, you should put your name. My name is Mrs. Dykes, so I'm gonna put Mrs. Dykes. And then you're going to write your homeroom teacher's name. Then you need to Hit the three dots before you click post because we need to attach your photo. You will click upload and then you will have the option to go find your image. Once you've found your image, click on it and hit done at the top and then it will show under your name and your teacher's name. Click save and it will look like this. See how it says awaiting approval? That means that once you have submitted it, it's there, but I'm going to take some time after a few people have done it, and I'm going to approve it, just to make sure everyone's name and teacher's name are on it. If you have trouble with this, just let me know. You can also send it to me and write your name and your teacher's name, and I can put it on the Padlet as well. Check back to this Padlet to see other people's work as it is uploaded and approved. All right, guys, looking forward to seeing your artwork and looking forward to being able to share it with Cowgirl Caitlin.